Hey, I'm Neil from the Canon Collective. I'm here today to take you through the basics of video editing and show you how easy it can actually be. So today, I'm gonna to be using Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna be cutting back and forth to the screen to show you exactly what I'm doing. So as you can see, I've got my files separated into one folder. We're only working with video files today and not using audio, but we'd have that separate. So we have our video files here. As you can see, I've recorded in MP4, and these are C-Log files. Now the Canon EOS R is able to record in C-Log, and C-Log is basically the video version of a photo raw file. It'll give us a little bit more to edit with, which we'll see today. So I'm gonna start the process by importing in all of my video files here. So I've only got five files, but it'll be enough to create a short video. So I'll select them all and drag them over into Premiere. And as you can see, you've got our import media to start section. to drag and drop, so we're ready to go. Our files will import, and here's where our files will be. Over here we have our program panel, which is where you're gonna see the result of what we're doing. And here is our timeline, which is where we're gonna drag our video clips down to. So we'll drag the first clip down here. And as you can see, up in the program panel, this is where you'll be able to see all of your changes. So I'm using 4K footage today. The name 4K comes from the fact that the horizontal resolution is roughly 4,000 pixels wide. 2160p just doesn't have the same ring to it. So you see here, you've got a little box to the right that says 1-4. Now what this means is I'm currently viewing my footage at one quarter of the size of it actually is. The last thing I wanna do is try and edit footage at 4K. So the file size of 4K is so large that the computer's gonna struggle. So we use one quarter of the footage just to edit in and then we export in 4K. Now my file has a little bit of shakiness to it. So what I'm gonna do is use our cut tool, which is over on the left, where all of our tool sections are, and cut this file up to what we wanna use out of it. Just gonna use the last second and a half of this video file. So we'll cut that and we'll delete the other part here. Now, with Premiere Pro, such an easy program to use, I can just click my file and drag it across to where I'd like it to be in the timeline. So let's have a look at that footage. Looks great. So we'll take our next video file and drop it in. And as you can see of what I'm doing now, I am able to click the start of our video file and drag it across. And what that will do is shorten our video file. It's just another way of using the cut tool, but both processes are the same. So we'll drag that up and across next to our next video file. And I'll do that with another two files for today. So here we have our four video files all ready to go and ready to be edited. So as you can see, with our C-Log files, they do look a little bit washed out and not as sharp as they should be. The reason being is because it's a flat, raw file. So let's get into editing them. We're gonna go across to our video effects button, which is located here. And we'll select Lumeretti color to edit our video for today. Now this is one of many ways you can edit a video file in Premiere, but I found this to be the most basic one, so we'll start here. Now with a video effect, we select which video effect we'd like to use, drag it across, and add it to our top of our file, where you'll see the effects control button up the top, and this is where we're able to change all of our effects, such as basic color correction, and if we want to be a little bit more creative. We'll go up into basic correction, we'll start with that, and basic correction is where we're gonna find white balance, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, all those things you'd normally find with a photography file in Lightroom on the right hand side, this is where those are gonna be located. And because we've recorded in C-Log, we're able to change things around quite a little bit more than if it was just a standard file. So we'll start with our temperature. Now you see you go to the left or the right, to the left will make it a little bit cooler and to the right will go warmer. I was pretty happy with how this looked in camera, but I'll add a little bit more warmth so you can see what happens. We've got our tint, to the right will be purple and then to the left will be green. Again, pretty happy with how the video looks, so we'll stick with where it is. Next we'll move on to exposure. This is where we're gonna make our video file brighter or darker. You'll have much more room and much more availability to play around with things because of the raw video file, but you don't want to overplay with exposure because what can happen, your file can blow out or be too underexposed. So it's always best to try and get your exposure perfect in camera, but if you have to change it, here's where you'd find that. Next, we moved on to contrast, where with a 
C-Log video, this is the biggest thing that is really missing from a C-Log video is your darks and your contrast. So this is where you would add that in. As we can see, if you move it to the left, it'll look a little bit more washed out and to the right, you'll have a more contrasted file. And I definitely want to add in a little bit of contrast to my file here. Ensuring that you get your exposure right in camera is absolutely vital, and especially when you're working with highlights also. So this is where we'll change those highlights around only a little bit. And to finish off, we have our whites and our blacks, which is where you change your whites and your blacks on your video file. The last step in our creative process with changing our video here is seeing our saturation. So this is where you can make your photo, black and white, or boost up your color. I like taking a little bit of saturation out of my video files that look like this. So we'll take that down to just 94%. The next tab we'll find is the creative tab. So the options you have in your creative tab are faded film, sharpen, vibrance, and another saturation tab. So you'll see there that the most important one, especially with this C-Log footage, is to add a little bit of sharpness here. This is where you'll make your video look a little bit sharper. But there's no need to do anything else in our creative tab just for these video files. We don't want to over edit because that's the last thing you'd want. So when you're using a Mac, take advantage of your Command C and Command V option, which is copy and paste. So when you're using things like effects, you can copy that effect and paste it onto another video file, such as as I'm doing below right now. This will save you a lot of time also. When you're doing video files, say if you've shot in the same area for a while, all of your video footage is, is the same exposure, you can copy and paste onto all of your video files and save you a bunch of time instead of having to redo every single edit. And as you see here, I'll copy and paste onto all of my files and the only ones I'm gonna to have to change is where it's a completely different lighting setup, which is this one shot of this tractor outside and also my ferns at the end. What I'm gonna do now quickly is just go through and make sure that all of my edits that I've done on all of the frames have worked out well. Because the last thing you wanna do is just copy and paste and then export and you're all done. Always go through and triple check everything that you're doing. All those edits look great to me. So our next step is to work with some transitions. Now transitions with videography, it's something that a lot of people can overuse and that's the last thing that you wanna do because a transition will change pretty much your whole look of your video. I'm gonna add a couple of transitions onto, these, onto this video so you can see how it's done for today. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't use any transitions. I'd just add the files next to each other and so that they run smoothly into each other. Today, we're gonna to look at using cross dissolve, which is where one bit of footage will dissolve into our next bit of footage. So I'll add cross dissolve onto my first clip here, and then it will dissolve into my next clip. Another thing to note too, is you'll see here, it's red at the top. What this means is it's unrendered footage. So it might be a little bit slow sometimes. You press your enter key or return, and that will render your footage for you. So we're gonna add our white transition to our first video file going into the second here. So we'll drag this across and put it onto our first video. And now you can see that what that's done is give us a nice white clearance going from first to second. It's really effective if used right. So now that our video file is complete and we've watched it back to ensure that it's perfect, it's time to export our video. How to do this is we go up to file, down to export, and we select media. This is where things can get a little bit confusing if you're not sure which export setting to select. So here we have our presets. So you can select everything from match source. If you're uploading something to Facebook, you'll see that there's a Facebook option here for 1080 or 720. What can happen with Facebook video sometimes, it, it can be compressed. So that's the perfect one to select to ensure that your video is still seen at the highest res. The setting that we're going to select today is going to be YouTube 1080p HD. And HD stands for high def. Next is to select our output name. So this is where you name your video file. For today I'll just put test video. And also where your file is going to be located. So today I'll select my hard drive and then save. The next thing to do is go down into our video settings and ensure that they're all correct. You can see on the right here, you have a match source button. If you click this button, you'll see that your dimensions are going to change from 1080, so this one will be at 2160. What that match source button does is matches the settings to what your video file was. I don't want to do that today because I only want to export in 1080, not in 4K. So I'll go back and select my preset as YouTube 1080p. So one of the most important things when you're exporting video, especially for Instagram, Facebook, 
is to go to our bitrate settings and select bitrate encoding VBR to pass. So by selecting VBR to pass, you'll ensure the best possible quality for your video. Last but not least, we'll select use maximum render quality, which again will give you that best possible quality, and then use previews. So if we're uploading to YouTube, this will give us previews to be able to use for our thumbnail. And then we click export, and you're all done. So thanks for joining me today. For more tutorials on how to shoot video, head over to our website.